Okay. We're live. Okay, so while I am just uh, gathering, gathering some some people to the Facebook Live uh, event, the big event, the other big event. Of course, there's the uh, sort of announcement of King Charles the Third. It's pretty big, pretty a big event, isn't it? And then uh, we have just after the the announcement of. Uh, the Moon Diary, Michael's Moon Diary, with astrologer Beth Yabsley. Oh yes, that's right. It is the uh, the the time for the big reveal. Been working at this uh, in the background for a while, but well, since uh, sort of conceived of it to do it back in January, and um, uh, but it's quite quite a big thing to sort of gather and get everything together. And I was wondering whether. To do uh, to do it or not because uh, do, 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 do. hello there Tony so and I was wondering whether to do the diary this is way back earlier in the year and uh, then I contacted Beth and said well how do you, how do you fancy a joint project and she was like uh, she thought about it and then uh, she thought well, yes let's go for it so with her encouragement we've basically been working in the background to uh, sort of piece together all the information, bring it all together into a right format and then go through all these revisions and all this kind of stuff till eventually we created a prototype and then uh, fine-tuned a little bit more as well and then after this big uh, sort of I would say almost hmm, sort of eight months kind of working uh, on and off in the background we eventually find, finally decided yes this is uh, this is what we we've uh, prepared. This is good. This is what we want to. This is what we want to reveal. This is our this is our baby. So, uh, Beth, nice to see you online there. Hello. Okay, so uh, we, we're we're sort of honouring the moon here, but it turns out there's a few other people on the moon energy today, aren't there? It would seem that the uh, the entirety of the uh, the British crown, the king, the queen, the, all of that royal energy somehow has all ended up focusing on the uh, this Pisces full moon, and to have it declared officially, the king, the King Charles III, is officially pronounced to the people uh, today at 11 o'clock now i didn't know this uh, this morning and i'm sure a lot of you probably didn't know any of these sort of things uh, so basically there's a tremendous moment in time super rare and you can't really anticipate it moment in time hello there elizabeth and basically we've all been sort of like caught a little bit off guard but the, the queen has passed away Pink queen queen has gone she's been there for like umpteen years 70 years she's been uh, there for all of my life and I'm sure probably all of your lives as well and we've probably completely taken it for granted haven't we and then all of a sudden that rug has been pulled out from under our uh, sort of psyche as it were and we don't really understand what's changed what's happened uh, it's like what does it mean you know and then you then I mean for me personally I'm sort of realizing that I've never known anything different this is like I had when I was born I was a baby I was a child you know there was a queen you know that was the that we born into this world with a queen okay and now she's she's gone and then you, but we are seeing behind the scenes into what creates our country what creates the laws what creates the religion what creates our value system how it all works and to see at the kernel of the the, the what you know our society is how our society is sort of uh, governed or whatever you want to call it is a, a kind of a, a very human Hi there, Diane. A uh, very uh, human thing, you know, you're, you're basically putting a family, a mother and a father energy at the very core of the fabric of a nation, and in fact, the fabric of, a, uh, of the Commonwealth. You're putting this concept of male and female, king, queen, you know, they're basic yin-yang concepts. And this uh, is at the kind of at the bedrock of our entire existence. And of course, well, uh, I think you'll find that most people could probably understand, uh, they could relate to that because, you know, you're young, you fall in love, you uh, meet somebody, you have a relationship, it turns out to be serious, and then you start a family, and you've then you cre you've created life, haven't you? And you've got, you are king and queen, and you've got a child, and then the child grows up, and, and so on and so forth, so you can understand through pers your own personal experience what that 
whole idea of uh, sovereignty and king and queen energy really is. And to have that as the fabric, the fabric of, uh, you know, the society we live in is relatable to. I think that's a, a beautiful, amazing thing. I wasn't intending on giving a speech about uh, monarchy, but it is a special moment. And our, our nation has focused in on this full moon energy as well. And that is not an accident. OK, so think of it this way. The, the royals and all of the, 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 the crown and the king and the queen and all of these things throughout, we're going way back into history. They used the, the, the cycles of the moon, the cycles of the planets, you know, back to Elizabeth I had a court astrologer, and that's how they would choose when to uh, do various, uh, you know, if you're going to, I don't know, uh, go on a tr go to travelling or all these kind of things or make an announcement and all this stuff, they would ask the court astrologer, hey, when should we do this? And then the court astrologer would um, uh, look into the charts and look at, and find some kind of balance of the energies and go, oh, this is a great day for uh, this, that or the other. Uh, and so guess what? They've done it again. You know, there's, it's not like they've left that in the past. They're still doing it. We are still doing it. And you can still do it. That's right. You can get on board and tune into the planets as well. Because here we have it. That's the box with Michael's Moon Diamond. And it's a very special box because this is a revolution. A revolution in diaries. Okay, so... Let me just explain how diaries were in uh, previously. Basically, you have the Gregorian calendar. You have the Gregorian calendar with month by month and you can fit various things against. You can put your weekends there. You can see uh, the different moon phases there. You could put the holidays there. You could put all the different planetary stuff. But effectively, when you... Um, I haven't got a calendar here, but basically when the when it goes from January to February, that's when you turn the page, isn't it? So you're basically putting the Gregorian calendar, the so the, the calendar we all know, uh, uh, in this in a very practical way. We turn the pages with with uh, with the changing of the months, but these months are effectively always slightly out of phase with the moon. They're always coming in and out of phase with the moon. Sometimes they align, sometimes they don't. They've got all varying uh, lengths of time. Uh, so you, there's no. It's more like a man-made concept. The actual when we turn the page of the calendar, we are seeing. We, we are using the our sort of agreed upon calendar idea. We all agree upon it, but it's a mind. It's in mind. It's in our minds. It's a collective conscious. Like for instance, we call this Saturday because we've already all agreed to call it Saturday. But if we all agreed to call it a different day, it would be a different day. It's just an agreement we all make, and that's how illusionary a lot of the world is okay but the moon the moon is actually there it's actually full this is like what you might call the real world okay so this diary is different so i'm going to show you i'm going to get into the box let me just let me just turn the camera around because the, i'm going to show you what is different about the there we go I'm getting excited. Uh, there we go. That's, that's that little bit around this side. So what I've done is I've changed the priority. Instead of putting the Gregorian calendar first, ah, there it is. Instead of putting the, I've put the cycle of the moon first. So the the calendar changes, the pages. The pages turn as the moon changes phase. And then, ah, there we go, let's have a look. Let me show, uh, you'll see it's all revealed. It'll all make sense when you see it. There it is. There's the moon first diary. There it is. <laughs> and let me have a look at it. It, ah, it, looks, it looks right there. Okay. Congratulations, Beth. Congratulations, me. Well done. We've done it. Michael's Moon First Diary with astrologer Beth Yabsley. And it really is true to say there, the world's only true moon-centric diary that blends seamlessly with your modern, with the modern lifestyle. So that's the whole idea. Is we put the moon first and we blend our calendar in with the moon's calendar. And I'm pretty sure this is the only one in the world. The only one in the world. Think of that. 
Right, it's a brand new thing, but I've designed it, or we have designed it, so that it is very, very, so that it is very, very practical. First of all, it's A5 in size. It's spiral bound, so you can really open it wide, okay? Uh, it's convenient enough to sort of put in, your, you know, your bag to travel around with, because it's got to be usable. The whole point about this diary is it's got to be practical. You've got to just think, oh yeah, that's that's super uh, super useful. I can I take it around with me. It's convenience. There's lots of space. You can see there. I've made lots of space there, so you can write lots of notes. It's not uh, too confusing. Okay, so let's just have a little look at it. Okay, so there's some little bit of instructions if you want a little bit of instructions just to help you decide how to do things. And a little bit of artwork, and then off we go. So the basic is so straight away, you see this new moon on this page and then the half moon on the next page. So what comes after So you've got new moon, half moon, it's a waxing moon, it's growing. Then you've got the full moon and we've got some sort of insights into the, this particular full moon. So the first full moon of uh, next year, 6th of January is in Cancer. Beth's uh, done some lovely astrology there and there's the Sabian symbol for that particular uh, alignment as well. There's a little bit of artwork for by myself there. And then we move on to the full moon. And so this this there is all this is energy is for the full moon. And you can see the uh, the weekends are marked, the dates are marked, the days are marked. It's very clear. And then over to the waning half. So that's the half moon that's waning onto that side. And so it goes on. Then we're over to the next moon. So you can see as the moon cycle changes, there you go. The diary pages turn and then we're on to the next moon, moon, the Leo moon on the 5th of February. Ah, I'm sure you do, uh, Elizabeth. You might have even drawn that uh, mandala yourself there. So some some artwork by myself. This one actually is from a, uh, where is it from? This is from a Celtic stone in Scotland. I copied that one out many years ago. So, and on it goes. So there you get to the full moon. And then, of course, the way the moon is waning here at the half moon. You see it. So each page, each sort of double page is a whole phase. That's the whole waning phase there. And then over the next page, that's the whole growing phase from new moon up to, right, that would be the very last day of the, uh, of the sort of waxing moon. And then on to the, uh, then it goes. So as you can see, it's it's a very different kind of concept, but I hope it's, in, well, I've used these in the past and they, they are very, very uh, useful in the sense that you, there's no difference in using this between your normal calendar and, um, and uh, you know, this one, whatever. They're basically uh, easy to understand, easy to plot out things. But let's say you had uh, an event and you were trying to think, well, shall I, shall I put uh, the event, let's say you had a couple of choices, shall I? Shall I launch my product or whatever it is on uh, this sort of this weekend here? Or maybe perhaps you had a, t a chance to sort of uh, do it to sort of a, a weekend later or a couple of weekends later over here. So you can see when you look back and you go, well, this one's a waning uh, energy. So it's the waning moon. So the, the energies are sort of fading away. So you that that moon is going to have that kind of a character. That weekend will have that kind of a character. OK, whereas here you've got this the, uh, the, the, the waxing moon. OK, so that would have the, the growing energy. The energy is getting strong with the moon. You think, well, that would make a better a better weekend to launch something or whatever. If you were planning on a meditation retreat, uh, something where you were getting in touch with uh, emotions, emotional release, a time for quietness, say, when you were saying, well, around uh, around the new moon might be around be better. So you might this this weekend around this Monday here, or maybe even this weekend, the energies might be a little bit quieter. So you're starting to get a kind of a practical way to uh, sort of plot out and plan your events uh, and uh, meetings with people. And you can clearly see whether the the energies are growing or whether, well, in this case, the, the energies are waning or whether they're growing. And also, all the way through, Beth has uh, sort of uh, gone through and found out significant sort of moments. So you here, for instance, Pluto moves into Aquarius. And then over here, Mars has gone into 
uh, Cancer there. So each of these are sort of significant astrological astrological moments. We've got Mercury has moved into Taurus. The uh, retrogrades are marked. Uh, the uh, there's Easter that's put in as well. There we go. There's a Pluto retrograde there in Aquarius again. And of course, we've got the eclipses, all the times and information. So if, if you're into astrology, it's very useful because it's all plotted out for you and you can get a complete map of the year ahead. And if you but if you're not into astrology, it doesn't really matter at all. But, you know, even if you're not into astrology, it's easy to understand the moon, isn't it? We've all got a relationship with the moon. That isn't really astrology. That's just literally life, isn't it? We, we don't we don't need any special um, qualification to understand the moon. It's it's ours. It's the whole of humanity's. And that leads me on. It goes all the way through and we get to the end. there. Uh, let me just reverse the camera. There we go. So so let me just point out the very last little significant thing about the moon. And that is that the sun, when you organize a calendar with the sun, you we've now discovered that when it's uh, say what is the time here so half past 11 here well what's the time in america uh okay so it's a different time in america maybe they're, they're still asleep so wh what does it look like outside your window uh okay so you look outside here and it's just in the morning time okay the weather is whatever it is if you uh then went to your you know friend uh you know in australia it's not only is it a, does the day look completely different, maybe the sun is setting or the sun has set, uh, so the, the, the day is different, but also the season is different. Still you and this other person are in the same moment, right? You're still talking to the people, you're both there in the moment. However, you've got completely different realities because the sun is in a completely different phase, okay? And the season is in a completely different phase. So the sun is always personal to you and your literal experience that you're having so it's a sort of a that's why it's your sun sign because it's like it, it show it's relative to you okay but the moon the moon is there for everyone it's if it's a full moon for me it's a full moon in australia it's a full moon in america it's a full moon in brazil it's a full moon in india it's the full, the whole of humanity it is is linked by the moon the moon is the child of the earth and so when we set our calendar by the moon you are starting to come out of your personal little kind of world and you're into this sense of connectivity into more of a, a unification it's something that everybody can relate to isn't that an amazing thing would you i've never really kind of cottoned on to it until i started looking into the moon and like this the difference in philosophy if you want or the difference in psychology or the difference in just literal reality of the two concepts between the, the sort of the masculine moon a masculine sun if you like and feminine moon those two differences are really one is kind of a um, personal and the other one is a kind of a bonding a unification something that's subtly on the same we're all on the same level so this is why i think uh, the the moon the moon calendar now, now backwards because I've got to reverse the camera. The moon camera could be revolutionary. Could be, it's the calendar that would work all over the world for all people. It's great, isn't it? Anyway, I'm really excited. I hope you are too. I will pop a little uh, note on where you can get the moon diary. Okay, so, and if you know any shops that might like to sell it, uh, let me know because I will uh, get in touch with them and see if they fancy stocking uh, the, uh, the moon first diary. Okay, so thank you very much for joining me for the big announcement. Woohoo! And uh, I hope you, um, I hope you get, get a little look at it and uh, perhaps even get a copy yourself. Starts, of course, for 2023. Okay, it's back to, thank you, Joy. Thank you, Joy. Uh, back to uh, watching uh, the, uh, the utterly fascinating uh, insight into not only the monarchy, but our own constitution, our own 
our own if you live in britain this is like seeing like uh seeing what's like wow this is how things have been created and it's fascinating to think you know like henry the eighth built the palace that they do these things in at the moment and there's this massive chain of hereditary and respect for tradition and you can really see how uh respect for tradition seems that the kind of the bedrock of the of of this nation if you like it's built upon uh, respect for the ancestors, uh, very Japanese concept as well, but of course you can see it here. And of course, if you look back to other uh, dynasties, the Egyptian or whatever, they went on for, you know, millennia, didn't they? Thousands of years uh, with the Egyptian um, uh, uh, religions and uh, culture there. And you, the the way, that, how does it work? You don't have to reinvent the world. You just take the wheel that you were given, you you keep it going and you, you, you polish it and you move it on a bit. And I think this is what they know. They know that when they inherit a title like king or queen, it's like a, a responsibility. It's a, a, it, it really is. A, you can see that Prince Charles is realizing he's going to, he's sacrificing himself now and all of his own personal whims. He's going to be uh, in a state of duty and service. And if that's taken in the right way, it's just, it is the most phenomenal, it's like a liber spiritually liberating to be truly in service. It wasn't, isn't that what uh, these other great figures, Gandhi and uh, Jesus and these other people, they, weren't they in service? Hmm, yes. Anyway, stuff to think about. Anyway, I uh, how, wish you a lovely day and uh, we'll see you uh, maybe, maybe, maybe on a Qigong moon moment. For those that are part of the Qigong Moon Club. Okay then, bye for now.